This video is going to be a general guide on programming a solar charge controller for use with lithium batteries. I will be using MillerTech lithium iron phosphate batteries and a Morningstar charge controller, but the same principles and steps will apply to any programmable charge controller. Before we get started, I disclaim any responsibility for damage to your equipment or yourself. Please don't try to do this if you are a beginner with solar or you aren't comfortable adapting these general steps to more specifics for your application. To program your controller, you will need a laptop connected to your charge controller with an ethernet or serial cable. In this video, I am using an ethernet cable as I think this will be the most commonly used for most people. In order for the laptop and the charge controller to see each other, they need to be on the same network. In my case, I disabled the Wi-Fi on my laptop and set the Ethernet adapter to a static IP address on the same subnet as my charge controller. The default IP settings for your controller can be found in your user manual or by contacting the manufacturer. Having said that, you will also need to contact your lithium battery manufacturer to get the charging settings and parameters for your specific battery. I highly recommend not using a generic lithium profile. Your battery will most likely never fully charge or perform at its best if you do. Your charge controller manufacturer will provide either a downloadable utility or a web interface to program your controller. In this case, Morningstar provides a utility called MSView, which I have opened here. If everything is set up on your network properly, the utility or web interface should be able to locate the charge controller. You may have to use the default IP address of your controller if your utility or web interface does not automatically find it. Once you have found the controller, you will need to either launch a wizard or manually edit a configuration file to program its settings. Again, make sure you contact your battery manufacturer and don't just guess on these settings. I was surprised at how different the recommended MillerTech settings were from what I thought they would be. Your wizard or configuration file may look much different, but in general, the main settings you will need are the maximum voltage or regulation voltage, the absorption voltage, the absorption time, if any, the float voltage, the float timeout, the float cancel voltage, the high voltage disconnect voltage, and the high voltage reconnect voltage. Your charge controller may also have low voltage disconnect settings too. Since your lithium battery will have a built-in battery management system, or BMS, a lot of the other settings will not apply. There may be some other settings that you need to configure, such as my Morningstar charge controller has LED lights on the front that indicate the charging status. You may also want to configure email and alert settings if your charge controller has these features. But I won't get into that in this video. Now that you've configured the controller, it should reboot and make the changes live. On my controller, I know when it is back up and running by the front LED lights and also the remote meter that I have installed. If you did not program things correctly or the setup failed, you may get an error code at this point. Other than that, you should be good to go. And for those that are curious, I wanted to show a side-by-side -side comparison of the Morningstar default lithium charge profile on the left and the MillerTech recommended settings on the right. It may not look like a big difference, and the settings on the left wouldn't damage my batteries, but there's enough difference that my batteries would never fully charge and probably would not get the full expected cycle life. Thanks for watching this video, and if you're interested in buying some MillerTech batteries, be sure to go to the link in the video description.